heart of East Texas, a river flows through hardwood bottomlands much as it has for thousands of years. This is the Natchez River. Along its banks are some of the most biologically diverse habitats in the United States, and also some of the most endangered. It's here where many would like to see a new national wildlife refuge. It's also here where the city of Dallas and the Texas Water Development Board would like to dam the Natchez and build a reservoir. The Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex is one of the fastest growing areas in the nation. Most of their water comes from a network of reservoirs. To meet future needs, they have proposed one more. Called the Fastral Reservoir, it would be built on the Natchez River, southeast of Dallas, between Palestine and Jacksonville. The Natchez River corridor, the Natchez River Basin, is important to everybody from, from its headwaters all the way to the coast because it provides water for the national forest and also the big thicket and it also keeps the Sabine Natchez estuary on the coast healthy. So it's very important that the continuous flow of water here be maintained for those reasons. You know, one other reason that the Friends of the Natchez River got involved in this is we didn't want to see our friends and our neighbors lose their land by eminent domain to Dallas Water Utilities, who was going to make a profit by selling that water. To me, that just wasn't right. Well, we have a farm on uh, the north of uh, Maydale that's uh, been in the family over 100 years. My dad was raised here. I've been here all my life, you know, and hopefully my grandsons will be here also. It ruined me, you know, I mean, it'd be just a different way of life. But for the public, I like people just to look at what they're going to lose. There's not many places left like this in Texas today. There's 70,000 acres here of land without a house on it. It's just pristine bottom land along the Natchez River. And once this is gone, it's gone. You can't replace it. These hardwood bottomlands play a vital role in maintaining water quality. As seasonal floodwaters top the banks, they deposit sediments, wastes, and pollutants from runoff. The woods act like filters transforming some pollutants into less harmful substances. As the waters recede and continue downstream, they enhance the water quality of bays and estuaries on the coast. Over the years, these rich forests have diminished. Since the 18th century, we have lost nearly 63% of our Texas hardwood bottomlands. Proposed reservoirs may contribute to that decline unless alternatives are found. The Fastral Reservoir that they propose would only provide 150,000 acre feet of water per year. There's several other avenues where they can uh, procure water other than Fastral Reservoir. There's the Toledo Bend Reservoir that has 2 million acre feet of water that's available, and a proposal has been made, I understand, for that to be provided to Dallas. Pipelines already exist from the city of Dallas to lakes in East Texas, so it would not be an insurmountable thing to do to connect up with these pipelines to Toledo Bend. The one difference is Dallas would not control those sources of water. They would have to buy it from another provider. They would control Lake Fastral. A huge amount of water in cities goes to water lawns. During peak demand, 50 to 65 percent of a city's water use can go to watering landscapes. Though water use in Dallas is high, there are efforts to conserve. For over a decade, the Dallas Water Utility has sponsored a tour of landscapes where citizens can discover ways to save water. The Waterwise Garden Tour is a way for people to see the native and drought tolerant plants, native and adapted plants that can grow in this region with little supplemental water and very few chemicals to help them along their way. And so we're hoping that folks can see success stories and then take that back and, and use that in their landscapes. 
water is a limited commodity and every city is concerned about how much water their citizens are using. And so since so much water is used outdoors, this is particularly a good way for us to educate folks on how to save water in a dramatic way. Well, I was looking for a more of a natural setting, uh, native plants as opposed to uh, plants that aren't indigenous to our area. And I like the, the natural setting of White Rock Lake and the prairie. And so I started learning that there's native plants that are drought tolerant. You know, water is a scarce commodity and a precious resource. It really makes sense to use plants that are native of the, of the Blackland Prairie area and, uh, and it saves on your water bill. Large cities, just because of their size, use a lot of water. Roughly a third is lost in transmission simply through leaks. Water losses and leaks and those types of things are as much a part of conservation as customer behavior. There's a couple of things that we've done. We're investing a tremendous amount of money in the replacement of our distribution system because it is an aged utility. A lot of our system is in excess of 50 years old, so we're spending millions of dollars annually replacing old water mains that have uh, chronic breaks. Over the years, the Dallas City Council has authorized more programs to conserve water. One measure restricts lawn watering during the heat of the day. Customers cannot water from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. We run that beginning in April through November 1st. It reduces the amount of time you could water. And secondly, our peaks. And, and many of our neighboring cities have seen reductions in their peaks as much as 15 to 20 percent. It saves water, saves power, and then it can defer the need to expand treatment plants, which is an expensive proposition. Another way to reduce the amount of water being used on landscapes is by reusing water from treatment plants. We currently have a project that we use with our municipal golf course where they use some highly treated effluent for watering, and we're going to expand that program. But in addition to that, we have about 25% total in our long-range plan that has water conservation and reuse as part of meeting our, our needs in the long term. It's also clear that the Fastral Reservoir is part of the long-term plan. The City of Dallas and the Texas Water Development Board sued the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to stop the creation of the Natchez National Wildlife Refuge. In June of 2008, the 3rd District Court ruled in favor of the wildlife refuge. Dallas and the Water Board appealed and filed further injunctions to stop the refuge from acquiring additional land. Due to the sensitive nature of this lawsuit, none of the parties involved would address any specifics. I don't see it as a conflict between state and federal entities. You know, I just see that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife is doing their job. Their mission is to protect wildlife habitat in, uh, in the United States, and that's what they're trying to do. You know, uh, I don't see it as being in, in direct conflict with even the Texas Water Board over the Fastral Reservoir. Like I said, there's other ways that we can have both. Dallas can have water from East Texas. There's water here that can be provided and we can have a wildlife refuge. We can have both. One of the things cities provide is commerce and jobs and economic growth for the state. And so whether people in rural communities or people in urban communities realize that that relationship is one of the things that keeps the state healthy. It's important to note that. So the balance about the state's economy is really important. And since it's the state's water, we all have to use it wisely, regardless of our business. You know, money can't buy everything. It's just irreplaceable. There's a lot of people like me. Even people that don't have land on the river, they just don't want their way of life changed. We're just a little country community. We sort of like things the way they are. We don't want to offend the people of Dallas, but maybe they can find an alternative to solve their water needs. Not here, not now, not on this pristine wilderness. You're gonna ruin all of that. You're going to be taking away the the refuge for wildlife, the refuge for the human soul, which you can find here. Listen.
Listen.